And then in the midst of that, T runs up and sneaks Scotty. You. Yeah. It's interesting because the way she told her story uh-huh. on her YouTube channel, uh-huh. it was like funny. Yeah. But she didn't mention how she was running away from Scotty after she through the first hand. No, why would she mention that? And she lost. Right. At least be honest like Anne when she said, you know, you know, Roly hit the Mario coins out of my head. We respect <laughs> that. We respect that. Be like Anne. If you lost, be funny about it. Welcome back to another episode of the Petty Headquarters, and I'm your host, Tiana Locke, and this is Jesse Strange, and we are going to be taking you along the ride for part two of this Baddies East reunion. Uh, yup. Are you excited for this? Girl, I'm, I'm, listen, I feel like we just finished watching this shit, so I'm drained. I'm not going <laughs> to hold you. The reunion drained me. I was like, oh, Yo, it drained me. First of all, we are on our way to find out if this is the best reality TV reunion, show reunion, reunion yes. in history. Okay, but I've been thinking because I've been like reading you got your guys' suggestions and I'm definitely going to watch the ones that you guys suggested. So if you think there is one that has been better thus far, please leave your suggestions below. I think they but, have a point with BGC9. I'm not going to hold you. And listen, I've seen that reunion, by the so end, I know. By the end of these recaps, I want to be able to determine whether mm-hmm. or not, and I'm going to like have a whole list and everything. And right. I feel like when I need to know what you guys think makes a good reunion. So what I came up with was the host, mm-hmm. the conversations, right, the right, questions, right. the fights. Right. Uh, you know, the, the drama, the drama. Right. So what do you think? If I miss something, please tell me what components do you think makes a good reunion? Because by the end of these recaps, right. I want to determine whether mm-hmm. what I said before was truth or not. So, right, 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 right. Yeah. Well, I feel like what you said had a point, but I also do feel like there's going to be some reunions. That's gonna, they're going to be neck and neck. Yeah, I'm yeah, not going to yeah. hold you. I feel like it's going to be neck and neck. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I mean, geez, so let's just dive right into part two of this reunion. Yeah, this um, one was a lot. This, this was a <laughs> lot. Like, you know, they... They picked it back up from where we left off. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of all, let's just start from the beginning where we left off, right? E.T. and Tzatziki, they fight. Mm-hmm. And then Anna tries to jump in, Roly trying to hit Anna. But peep that Sky. Yeah. Sky jumped in, mm-hmm. which was very interesting to me because, you know, what's funny is that I was hearing rumors that she fought. But now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, she didn't fight. She jumped in. So yeah. it's like, that's different from having your own one-on-one fight. And my thing is, why? Right. Was Why? Why did you jump in? Like, I get y'all were like talking about, oh, house B, house B. Right. To see you can fight. She don't need you to jump in. And and y'all jumped in. Anna and Sky jumped in when E.T. was on the floor with Tzatziki right. at that point. You didn't even jump in right. when they were standing up. Right. Because you know. Y'all would have got hit. Nope, they would not, got hit. They would not have been doing that standing up. But when Shorty's down, that's when yep. you want to jump in? Kind of mm-hmm. corny. Yeah, I agree. I don't even know why Sky jumped in. We had to rewind that a couple of times. First of all, we watched it twice. <laughs> <laughs> because we wanted to make sure we saw what we saw. Because it was a lot going on. You know, we had to get a little notes and whatever. So we had to watch it twice. Yes. First time, you know, I was watching and taking my notes. But then the second time, I feel like I really got to intake everything. And I know the second time you watched it, you got your notes. The first yeah, time, yeah, I it, was just, it. it was just all over the place. It was so yeah. much going on. Yeah, my brain, it, it processes things a little slower. So it was just like... <laughs> <laughs> Trying to figure out how many different things are happening at once, Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, so I, and then, you know, uh, Sky had dapped up Tzatziki uh, after that whole altercation where I was just like, oh, okay. Tzatziki and E.T. done went like three, four rounds. Yeah. Bar for bar. First of all, you could tell E.T. was tired, yo. Yeah. Like at the end of like round three with Tzatziki, like E.T. was tired. I'm not going to lie. Like I said it before, I'll say it again. E.T. stood up like, Stood a fight. Like, yeah, she lost, but she stood those rounds. I'm not going to yeah. lie. I got to give her the credit where she deserves. She did. She she did. I felt, oh. 
I don't feel bad. I know. Okay, okay. I I, I, that's why I held my tongue. It's like okay. I, so do you feel bad for her? I, you know, I am an empathetic human being. Mm -hmm. So like, mm -hmm. I don't. I get it. Look, I don't like ET either. I don't. But like, you don't like how she portrayed herself on the show, right? Right. And also, like, again, she made her bed. She wasn't an innocent person. She literally everything that happened to her in the reunion kind of was brought onto her by herself. Right, right, right. So I can't even, but it's just like, I just like, you could tell she was defeated, mm -hmm. especially after that fourth round with Tzatziki. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. I was like, damn, this poor girl. And like, obviously take that lightly because again, she brought it onto herself. But like, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just an empathetic human being. And right. to see her down like that, it's the same way I felt when Smiley was getting jumped by yeah, Sapphire. And I didn't feel bad for Smiley. Either. Right. So it's like, it's <laughs> in my nature to feel bad. Well, you know? I feel I feel like I'm an empathetic person too. You can be empathetic and know what crosses the line and when to set those boundaries. Sure, but I'm just saying, you know, like, you know, I did feel a little bad for her. Just sympathy so or empathy? Because there's a difference between the two. I don't even know any of that. I think sympathy is what you mostly feel. Whatever. Empathy may be for Smiley, but like for ET, sympathy, I feel like. Whatever it is, I feel a little bit, you know, it's not, yeah. She was losing. Bad. Yeah. Her face swelled up like a yeah. fucking balloon. Bro. It really did. To see you got a couple of uppercuts in there and the last round that they fought, you could Done. tell, like, yeah, after getting hit by Tzatziki, it was over. She had noodle legs. Yeah, it was over. And then her falling, yeah. her falling over the rug, like, you know, that first round. Yeah. That was just kind of like, damn, girl. But yeah. like she looked like she was tired. She was done. I mean that and and to see you, she's not no slappy bitch. Like right. you throw in full force. Right. Y'all yeah, ever try boxing? That shit is hard. That shit is <laughs> take you out of breath real quick. <laughs> right. Exactly. So I mean that they had their little rumble tumble. And then in the midst of that, T runs up and sneaks Scotty. You Yeah. It's interesting because the <laughs> way she told her story uh -huh. on her YouTube channel. Uh -huh. It was like funny, mm, yeah. but she didn't mention how she was running away from Scotty after she no. fucking threw the first hand. No, why would she mention that? And she lost. If, right. At least be honest like Anne when she said, you know, you know, Roly hit the Mario coins out of my head. We respect <laughs> that. We respect that. Be like Anne. If you lost, be funny about it. But you didn't even like mention that. Yo, so not T literally sneaky Scotty and they're Sneaking running her. You running. know what it was? She was hyped up from the energy of House B because she talked about how like, oh, with House B is when I really felt like women empowerment, all of us being together. And it's like, fuck it. You snuck me. So now I'm gonna sneak you, which is what she said in her YouTube video. So I think it was just funny <laughs> that, of course, the adrenaline is high. Everybody's amped up. Y'all turned up. So now you decide to go sneak Scotty. When Scotty not even looking, checking for you, nothing, not worried about you. Honestly, Scotty seemed like she was over the reunion from the beginning. And not gonna lie, it, she did switch up real quick and clock T. Like 100%. she really grabbed her and started going pop, 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 <laughs> like twice. She but even like, when twice. she, even when T tried to sneak Scotty, Scotty like that's what I'm saying. Like caught on quick. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, I thought you meant the second part. No, no, both times. Yeah, but both the first times, time yeah. she definitely switched up and caught up right. real quick, like you said. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that was so weird. I was like, what the fuck? And then when the second time came around, when it was time for them to really fight, I don't know what was going on with T. I don't know what was going on. I was just like, girl, That's you should she knew. She, she fucked, fucked up. up. <laughs> I'm like, girl, you could have been like DJ Sky and sat this one out and looked cute. Because y'all look both looked really cute for this reunion. Yo, no cap. DJ Sky hit me up in DMs. Was like, she was like, because uh, there was this post talking about, oh, black women are portrayed like this and that. And it was like a, a clip of, uh -huh. of, the re of the reunion. Right. And DJ Sky's like, yep, that's why I stayed pretty the entire time. No, it's true. Because <laughs> like she, her outfit was so nice. She looked good. She looked amazing with that hair. I feel like short hair, is just it just works for her like it's and so red. nice come on she was with that red outfit she had going oh on. yeah yeah it looked really nice oh, okay, nice. Yep. Ooh, sitting pretty right you pretty at the <laughs> game, period so yeah i was like t honestly nobody was checking for you nobody was gonna fight you it was done you could have just sat there and looked pretty what what we said in the last one i just feel like even her her speech or what she had to say <laughs> was like a waste of space because again, again, it wasn't needed. I'm glad you went to the reunion and got your check. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you got your bag. But like, honestly, you weren't needed. Neither you was the needed. fight. 
yeah. with Scotty. <laughs> it was just like a waste of But it was space. entertaining because at the end of the day, ain't nothing funnier <laughs> than when Shorty like really picked the fight and then mm-hmm. lost. Right. She was running. Yeah. Bro, I'm short too. If I'm swinging, I'm going down swinging. Like, I'm not <laughs> running away. You're not going to have me looking stupid on camera. No right. way. Yeah, that's crazy. Not like that. <laughs> she no, ran. Yeah, yeah, she really did. I was like, damn. I mean, whatever. Moving on. Natalie and Biggie are in the middle of their own conversation mm-hmm. because Biggie's just like, why Biggie you switch feel- up? Da, 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 da. Yeah. Natalie's trying to explain the situation to her. And out of nowhere, Roly just pulls Biggie's hair. Yeah. <laughs> and then Natalie trying to get Roly off of Biggie was actually a shock to me. I was like, oh, now you care about Biggie? She like, kicked her. She kicked yeah, Roly. Yeah, she, she kicked her and like was really trying to, Break you know, diffuse the situation. And I'm just like, wow, this is actually interesting. First of all, can we just talk now? Natalie, this is the most quiet I've seen her yet. Like, I don't think you guys understand, Mm -hmm. especially if you've been watching Natalie for a long time from the BGC era till Mm -hmm. now. This is the quietest she's ever been. I'm like, wow, you're really not talking. What's going on? Yeah, yeah, no, it's crazy. First of all, I was really surprised, too, that she swung, uh, well, like, try to break up the whole situation with Roly and and Biggie. Biggie, Yeah, because... That's not like her usually, you know. She'd mm-hmm. just be staying out of shit. But I, yeah. I know I got to give her her props where it needs to be. Happy she did that, but you're absolutely right. Mm-hmm. She definitely is extra quiet this season. Mm-hmm. Especially after the whole E.T. running up on her. Yeah. You s- sort of see it in her eyes. She yeah. feels some type of way. What yeah. do you think? I will say what I feel about it right now. I, she looked like she definitely felt some type of way. Mm-hmm felt hurt but then again i can't even say hurt because i've never looked at her as someone that would develop personal connections with all of the baddies you know what i mean maybe some but i feel like at the end of the day if you are their boss that's what you are right but then again like she said she does try to be nice and generous and give the girls everything and do what she can for them, right? So maybe, I think she definitely felt like it was a slap in the face. Yeah. Like, I brought you on, I did so much for you, and then you did that. Like, why? So, yeah, I thought that Roly pulling Biggie's hair was, like, really corny. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it was random. It was definitely, like, a sneak. And I don't even know why she did that, but... I mean, I guess they don't like each other. I mean, obviously, they don't like each other, but she was talking to Natalie in that moment. Yeah. So why I mean, would you do that? I guess Camilla did the same thing to Roly. So. That's true. I mean, they was, they was really disrespectful this whole season. This whole reunion because yeah. everybody was sneaking everybody. Everybody it was, was like, sneaking everybody. It was like one person, Tasiki said, there's no rules to fighting. Mm-hmm. And then they they like stood on that. Even mm-hmm. Tasiki actually said that too. Mm-hmm. There's no rules in fighting. So they all stood on that this whole season. So I guess I can't really like, I mean, this whole reunion, but I guess I can't really be mad at Roly. But it was just like, uh, it was so random. Like, I'm not mad at you. Fight, for it. bitch. Like, Don't fucking grab her hair and sneak from behind. You know what I'm saying? Corny. But I just feel like they had their rounds already. So, like, you should be done. Yeah. <laughs> but then again, I don't know. I have no idea because Camila had her round with fucking Roly. <laughs> and I just want to say, I am severely disappointed. I am disgusted because you really was online making it seem like you you won the fight and you, yeah. you beat that hoe up and you lost. But not only did you lose where it went like, all right, maybe it could be open for debate, but like you literally fell on your back. Right. And all you see is big Roly back Roly just punching. covering the screen and just going do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah. You didn't win, sis. Yeah, <laughs> you, yeah. it was no no argument. There, you literally Ooh. lost. Yeah, I was like very disgusted. I was like, damn, disgusted. Camilla. Like I thought you said you had this in the bag. Like I thought I didn't know. Like I didn't know what to believe. That's why I was like, you know, let us wait and see. And now that I saw, I am just disappointed. I was just like, damn, you went you went down, and then it was over after that. That's why over. she had to come back around and sneak Roly. Yeah, but then she didn't even hit her. Yeah, she didn't do much. She didn't get. She went. Her. <laughs> she didn't get to her at all and then after that she left she didn't even get her second round like at least redeem yourself mm-hmm. like she just left talking about i don't got 
time he doesn't go home to my kids. I'm like, now you're well, going she, home to your kids. She just had a baby, so I can understand her by the time the, the show being done mm, filming, being mm. over it. Okay. You know okay, what I'm saying? Because yeah, yeah. it the reunion wasn't shot right away. Right, right. So by the time you see everything play out or whatever. But either way, I agree. I think, yeah. I think she definitely lost. <laughs> and... It was kind of crazy seeing her sneak Rolly from the back, too, because the same way I felt about Biggie's, the same way I felt about mm-hmm, Rolly when mm-hmm. she got snuck from behind. Because it's like, damn, sis can't even sit down for two seconds. No, they're coming nobody. From, they're nobody. coming from everywhere. Yeah, even when E.T. tried to randomly sneak Mariah. Like, what was up with that? Yeah. What was up with that? Was, I didn't even I didn't know understand. y'all had beef. Like, what was up with that? I didn't understand that. I didn't understand that either. And then Mariah running up but not doing nothing. Like, why did you run up to not do nothing like sis Whoa. you didn't have to do nothing why did she go do 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 and then stop literally stop she had a chance to run up and she really she wanted really to had i hate chance people like to that sneak like I she had people listen there's no rules in fighting everybody was sneaking everywhere bitch you had a time to sneak and you did not do that all right it's not really about that life she's not she thinks she she's is she's not <laughs> you know she's not and it's like it just say that you no. know, like instead of being fake and trying to be hard, just say that you are not. It's about funny that because life. she thought putting the Tims in the hat, the New York yo, hat, would make her seem harder. Than yo, it didn't it just we makes talk her about that corny. the last time? Yo, yeah. we really talked about that. Like, mm-hmm. Shorty really pulled up with the Tims <laughs> in the hat. Like, you still got dragged. Like, I don't get it. Yeah, but it, it it's interesting, right? Because if we really want to take it, like, E.T. seems like. Right. The way she was acting in the reunion was, fuck it. I'm going like everyone's against me. So I'm just going to fight everyone. Yeah. And it, it is. It, I don't know. I feel kind of it's sad because it's like it's almost embarrassing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Imagine being in a room where not only people in general who you're in cahoots with with Zeus, like, for example, Mariah Lynn or Roly, how long they've been associated. Not Mariah Lynn, but how long Roly been associated with Zeus and she can't even sit down without f- fucking being attacked. Right. Right. So it's like imagine being new to the network. No one likes you. And then, you know, obviously you stirred up the drama. Right. Right. I'm not saying taking that away, but it's Mm -hmm. just like, fuck it. She's just like, fuck it. I'm going to fucking fight everybody because E.T. does not know how to communicate. No. And she only communicates. Through fighting. Through fighting. Literally. It's interesting. Like you really wanted to fight Rock because she didn't let you like, you know, sleep with her. Like that's very (laughs) tough. That is very telling of the environment that you grew up in and just how you respond to certain situations. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's like, you know, ugh, I don't know. It's like, you know, the dudes that can't take rejection and hit you. Like, that's how (laughs) E.T. acts. Like, she acts like that. Like, for real. And that's what it seems like that's what she just grew up in and doesn't know how to communicate at Mm -hmm. all. Like, she just communicates with her fits. Yeah, 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 definitely. So, I mean, one thing I want to get to is at some point, you know, Roly decides to bring up the whole storyline about why her and Biggie have beef is because Biggie wanted to, quote unquote, eat her kitty cat. (gasps) And Rolly didn't let her. And she claims that that's the reason why they have beef. And I'm, I am I feel like, Rolly, girl, give it up. Pack it up. Stop the, fuck the cap. Up. Right. Like, stop the cap. Stop the bullshit. Like, pack it up. Like, okay, how long are you going to go on with this boring ass storyline? She's delusional. Bro, she's a liar. That's true, too. But, like, am, are you, I wish I was that delusional. I do, too. Right. She's really delulu. Like, she really is because she even really, Biggie's faint. She fainted when she heard that, <laughs> and I she loved said, it. Bitch, you stink. Your underarm yeah. stink. Under your titties stink. She said your, she your stink butt. from four different ways. Yeah, from four different parts of her body. Bitch, your upper lip stink. The rolls on your neck stink. She said you stink. <laughs> and it's not the first time. It's not. The we've first heard time. a cast member say that. I'm just like, why would she want to eat your pussy? Yeah. Looking up to you when she first came on is one thing, but eating your pussy, bitch, please stop the cap. Yeah. How long? And I feel like Rolly's the type to just get louder with certain things when she has nothing else to say mm-hmm. because she did it with Stunner Girl. Mm-hmm. She did it with DJ Sky. Mm-hmm. And now she's doing it with Biggie. She's did it with Biggie before. And she did it with Mariah Lynn. It's just like the louder she gets sometimes, it's just like, you know, you have nothing else to say. Mm -hmm. And it's just very obvious with her. So as soon as she did that, I was like, girl, please cut the cap. Mm -hmm. Cut the cap. Yo, Nene's face the entire reunion was a joke. Nene was (laughs) flabbergasted. She was so, when everyone was fighting, she was like, yo. 
she could <laughs> she, not believe what was happening before her eyes. Poor Aunt Nene. Yo. She did not know what to do. She was like, everyone looked different without the wigs. I don't know who's who. I was like, damn, yo, poor Nene. Yo, <laughs> yo but she was she was a good, she's been a good host so far. Yeah. First of all, they respect her than Janice, more yo, than Janisha. Yo, nobody, nobody respected Janisha. Nobody like, cares. Janisha's <laughs> talking and everyone is talking over her. I was like, oh my god this is like so bad yeah no one respects Janisha it and then like makes me feel some type of way but I guess uh, you mm. so you don't feel bad for Janisha but you feel bad for E.T. I'm not saying I don't feel bad for Janisha I'm saying that Janisha kind of brought it on upon herself oh a hundred percent she did but at the end of the day she's still the host the same way I said E.T. brought it upon herself I mean I don't feel bad because it's not like she's a strong per- spoken person anyways Nini on the other hand not only is strong spoken, but she clocks it. Like J- Janisha doesn't even clock when someone's yeah. lying. She did, however, which I'm happy about when uh, Biggie confronted Natalie mm-hmm. about how she was acting and then, yep. you know, being two faced mm-hmm. and saying one thing on the confessionals and didn't have Biggie's back. Yep. Janisha, like, first of all, Natalie tried playing fucking yeah. stupid. Yeah, she's like, when did I say that? Right. Who say that? Right, right. Playing real dumb, having memory uh-huh. loss. And then Janisha did say, yeah, well, you did yeah, say that. Did say, I which, watched the show. I was surprised because Janisha usually just doesn't say anything. Right. So I was actually surprised and I got to give that to her. She she told Natalie, which I think is interesting, right? Because it's like going back to when Natalie feels about how E.T. E. attacked her. Mm-hmm. Right. Imagine. Right. You you took this girl on from a different network, barely knew her, but took Roly's word, you know, that she's a good like right. you know, friend or whatever, brought her on. And right. you turn your back on Biggie and Biggie had a good point. Right. Because it's like you knew me from a previous season, you know, and I I should have been in house A is what she said. Right. Which I'm I'm going to ask you how you feel about that. Right. Because that's why Anna said what she said. Because right. Bitch. Why would you say that? Right. So it's like but she has a point because, you know, we put money in each other's pockets. Why would you sit here and act funny with that girl? You literally she was your lap dog and you guys egged her on to bully Biggie the mm-hmm. entire season. And look how she turns her back on you. Mm-hmm. Now she got you looking stupid in your own reunion. Yeah. And look at Biggie yep. still has respect for you. Juan, what is it? Most valuable baddie. All that. Isn't fan that favorite. All that. Ain't it is that, crazy. And that's why I feel like some a little bit deep down inside when you looking at Natalie and she looking all sad and shit. Because at the end of the day, like everyone else, she's she could. This is what happens when you put yourself in front of the camera instead of just being the executive, the EP outside. Right. You are a talent. So people are going to confuse it. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you kind of put yourself in that Agreed. situation. Agreed. Point blank. Period. Right. Right. But I guess from a, a fellow Capricorn, someone who has open opportunity and our way of showing love is to give, mm. right? Mm-hmm. Imagine turning your back on Biggie and then the person you had who you took on fucking comes and attacks you and makes you look like a fool on, on at the reunion. I'd be fucking tight too, you know what I'm saying? But I don't feel that sorry for fucking Natalie because at the end of the day, I love that E.T. ran up on her because mm-hmm. that shit was epic. Either way, if you really slow down that video, <laughs> Natalie is back falling backwards before, before E.T. E. gets, gets to her. her. Yep. And it was so funny because you were like, E.T. scared her backwards. No, what yeah, did you like, say? I don't remember what I said. Yo, but said- all I know is that she got scared <laughs> that she pushed herself back. Like she <laughs> fell backwards because she got scared because she <laughs> saw E.T. running. She didn't know what else to do. So she said, and then went back. Like, because I'm like, if you really look at it, E.T. didn't even get there yet. Yeah. And the chair is back. She's on her back, legs yeah. in the air. E.T. didn't even pull up yet. Like she didn't even really hit you yet. Nah, it's mad funny because you're right. If yeah. you slow it down, it's true. It's so true. Yeah. So how did you feel about Biggie saying that she should have been a part of House A? I feel like first and foremost, I'm going to answer the House A thing, but I also want to talk about what Biggie said to Natalie. Okay. Um. So yeah, her saying that was like, I understood where she was coming from. But at the same time, I was like, why are you saying that? Knowing that you rocking with House B, knowing that you want, you know, most valuable baddie because you were in House B. Mm-hmm. Let's really talk about it. Well, she said because of principle. Right. I get that, why she would say that. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I feel like if she wasn't in House B, I don't think she would have been fan favored or won MVB. So, and that's True. most valuable baddie. And I feel like because you were in House B, this is why 
you are a fan favorite right now and why you are kind of like on top of things right now because mm-hmm. you are in house beat. So I feel like you shouldn't have even said that, which is why I understand why Anna got on her case because I would have too. Like, bitch, get the fuck out of here. Like, you was in house beat and this is the reason why, you know, yeah. I would have got on your case too because why would you say that, bitch? Yeah. But I do understand the principle. Like, I was here before. Mm-hmm. But and that's how you know you don't respect me. Right. That's and I think true. that's really what Biggie was trying to put emphasis on. She wasn't necessarily saying she didn't want to be with House B. Right. But she was just trying to put emphasis on like, wow, so I was here before. You know, I, you know, put money. We both put money in each other's pockets. You know, when I'm doing a show, I want you to come. Like, all this stuff. But it just shows, I guess, truly to Biggie that you don't really value me or respect me the way you do these other girls. 100%. And you make a good point there that would Biggie be as popular and as loved by the fans if she was in house no i don't think so because (laughs) you know i feel like certain people certain groups of people bring out different sides of you right i don't think biggie would be able to be herself Mm -hmm. in house a no right you know what i'm saying she would really be in there it's just too much it's a conflict of interest yeah i agree that's a good point yeah, I don't think she would have even been what like how she's. I don't think she would have even had a chance to really redeem herself. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. If she was in House A, mm-hmm. so yeah, I'm not really feeling it. Yeah, but I just think it's interesting though too to go back on like how Biggie feels about Natalie. Um, her mentioning the whole situation where you talk shit about me in the confessionals and da 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 da, but like I had your back. I thought we were this, that, and a third. Natalie trying to act stupid and then Janisha called her out. I was like, yeah, you did say that. I just think it's interesting that Natalie would feel so hurt by E.T. But you hurt these bitches all the time. Right. So this is why I'm exactly. like, why is why do you have this energy of like acting like a victim right now? Right. You're right. acting like a victim. But it's like, Natalie, like, let's be let's be real. You've done a lot. You've said a lot. Mm-hmm. And honestly, when Biggie said E.T. told me that you said to pack my shit. I don't think Biggie was lying about that. Yeah, (laughs) I really don't. So, uh, or E.T. Yeah, I don't think E.T. was lying about that. First of all, why would E.T.? I don't even think E.T. is that smart to manipulate a situation. So why Natalie is the type to do something like Mm -hmm. that, especially for ratings. Yeah. And we've seen it time and time again where people have caught her in so many lines. Yeah. So at this point, it's like, don't act dumb on some, no, I didn't. I didn't. I'm so surprised. Like, girl, you've done a lot to these girls. Let's be fucking real. It's true. And then I'm not, I'm not surprised if she did say that to Mm E.T. because E.T. is easy to manipulate. Right. And then on top of that, she was hyping up that eviction notice shit. Yeah. The, look, she was hyping up E.T. Everything. Everything she did. Everything. Everything. When sneaking her at the pool party, yep. they, were, they purposely were arguing to distract the girls mm-hmm. while they were coming in mm-hmm. so that E.T. can get her sneak in. Yeah. But also they was throwing water balloons, After, too. As, as the fight so was happening. So it's like, don't yep. sit there and make it seem like, oh, no, I didn't do anything. But, girl, you did. Right. You did. No, for sure. Then you were sure. talking shit when y'all were in the car and the sprinter. Be for real. Mm-hmm. Come on. Like, I don't need the fucking crocodile sad face, bitch. <laughs> I don't need the fucking victim mentality. Because it's like you trying to play victim right now. That's why I was like, yeah, I can see that she's hurt. But also, I don't care. I agree. That's And I, that's, I'm on the same boat. Because like, like I said, I can see why she can feel that way. However, all that other... Th- th- that doesn't negate everything else no, you've done. You know what exactly. I'm saying? You kind of done this to yourself. You, exactly. And that's why I was I was really happy that she got I done. feel like all of the stuff that Natalie has done outweighs how she feels during this reunion. Agreed. Because you've done so much where I don't even care. Yeah. Like, yeah, I can acknowledge that, yeah, like, you look betrayed and maybe, yeah, you do so much for these girls when it comes to materialism and taking care of people. Yes. But... You also do a lot of fucked up shit, too. So let's not pretend. Bro. Right, right. Exactly. For sure. What I did find interesting was um, we got clarity. So I remember when uh, when a couple of months ago when Natalie was out in New York. Mm-hmm. I think it was New York, but it was somewhere in the East Coast. And she was out with Mariah Lynn and, and a few other baddies. Yeah, it wasn't many. It was like it must be it must have been like four or five of them. Mm-hmm. And. They were out having a good time and, you know, saw a bunch of pics and stories or whatever. It was the basketball game. It was a basketball mm-hmm. game, courtside. Yeah. Then the next day, she's like, oh, I posted a story like, 
oh, I'm done inviting baddies because I some uh, basically it seemed like someone was nagging her because they weren't invited to courtside. Mm -hmm. And the entire time I thought it was Smiley because Smiley's the type like every time Natalie's in Miami. Smiley just ends up showing up, like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And or she'll like throw shade, like, "Oh, like, why didn't you invite me?" Because she did throw shade on her story, which is why we just thought it was only Smiley. Exactly, but it turns out because Natalie opens up about it mm-hmm. that it was ET the entire time, mm-hmm. which I thought was interesting. I'm, I'm really happy we got kind of a little bit of clarity mm-hmm, on that, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, E.T. was talking about how she felt like Natalie didn't check in on her. She didn't invite her anywhere and all this stuff. And I feel like, you know, this is where this is the only time where I feel bad for E.T. When it comes to her mental and when it comes to just how she was raised. And again, the generational trauma, you can tell that there's a lot of trauma there. And like even her mentality is not fully developed. Like, I'm not going to hold you. And this is not me being trying to be an asshole. I feel like the way she thinks is like sometimes of a teenager or a kid. Right, right. You know, she thinks like that. So when it comes to her emotions and her feelings, mm-hmm. of course, it's just so outrageous where she just want to fight. It's erratic. She doesn't, it is erratic. She just want to fight. She doesn't know how to control it or she doesn't know how to communicate. She only communicates with her fist. But it also gives like a little girl almost. That just yeah. Her feelings are hurt. Yeah. Even with Tzatziki, like you hurt my feelings. Mm-hmm. You know, as much as we talk shit about it, even how she acted with Tzatziki, yeah, I didn't like that you hurt my feelings. Same thing with Natalie. Natalie hurt her feelings, but she couldn't say that. She just wanted to fight. Right. She couldn't literally And it's the same thing it. with Krishan. Krishan didn't want to sleep with her. You hurt her feelings. Mm-hmm. But she fought instead of actually communicating. And this is what I'm saying. Like, I feel like that is very childlike and that is very, yeah. like, immature. And again, I feel like, like I said, like, her mentality is just not in a mature state where, it, in my opinion, where it should be for her age, even though, how old is E.T.? Um, okay, so E.T.'s 25. I feel like the way she acts, I, I would have never expected her to be 25. No, she still acts like she's in high school. She High school, mm. not even 21, high school, Yeah, girl. yeah. So I just feel like I do feel bad for her on that end of not having the guidance because you could tell she don't right. got the guidance because she don't know how to communicate her mm-hmm. thoughts or anything like that. It's just fight, fight, fight because that's what she grew up around. And I feel bad because like part of me looks at it as a little girl who just felt left out. Yeah. At mm-hmm. the end of the day, and that's wanted really a friend. wanted a Wanted. That's what it is. Yeah. And that's the only part where I will say I feel bad because I can see that being where damn like it's giving this this little girl just felt left out mm-hmm. and felt like damn like I'm alone type shit. And that's exactly why she again she fought everyone in the reunion yeah. because I'm alone anyways. Yeah. So I'm just going to destroy everything around yeah, me literally. instead of looking at it as like uh, which I'm, I'm pretty sure she has an opportunity but not to capitalize on it because Again, when you are now, that's TV. They love that type of energy. Mm-hmm. It, but it's not as big as baddies. No. So it's like this was a bigger opportunity to capitalize on, and you didn't even think about it like that. Because she don't think like right. that. Right. That's what I'm saying. That little girl energy exactly. that you keep talking about. And this is what I've been saying, like, when I be saying what I be saying about her, because, and, like, Usually I'd be being funny, but like, no, I'm dead serious. And I feel like her mentally set up, she's just not mentally mature as what she should be at 25. Right. Because of the people she surrounds herself with, Mm -hmm. probably her family dynamic and all the stuff that happened to her while growing up. Like the girl got a whole scar on her face. This is why they call her Scarface. This bitch been fighting all her life. (laughs) So I just feel like. She needs to go to therapy. Yeah, I would love to have a conversation with E.T. I'm not going to lie, right, because right. I feel like it would be an interesting conversation just uh-huh. to get, which if you even get a conversation out of someone like her, right? Oh, you got to, you got to. <laughs> listen, with people like that, you got to pull teeth. Yeah. And you can't stop until you get the teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot, because obviously immediately it's going to be guarded, right? Someone right. like that, you're going to be guarded immediately. Mm-hmm. You know, she was guarded as soon as she walked in the house. Yeah. Remember when we said she came in hot? It yeah. was immediate, like, yeah. guarded up, like, so yeah, I don't know. She came in the house with black Air Forces on. That's when I knew. I was like, girl, you've been fine all your life. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's the only time I feel bad for her. But I mean, the whole Natalie thing, I understand where she's coming from too. But also, let's be real. It's not far-fetched that you would set E.T. up. It's not. It's not. It's not it's far-fetched. Really not. And I guess that trans, 
tra- uh, transitions us to uh, the stylist. What we want to talk about, right? <laughs> because you are guys that you're about to get some Y'all about exclusive, to get some tea. crazy shit from us right now. Because <laughs> it was so. This is crazy. It's crazy. My memory. My memory, bitch. The real question is. Did E.T. get set up by Natalie? Right. Because, like you said, it really isn't far-fetched. It's not. Especially because it's easy to hate E.T. Exactly. So, did she? And who did she blame? What, so what was first, the story? Let's, let's talk about it. So, E.T. claims that Natalie stylist told her and confided in her in advance that Natalie was going to set her up mm-hmm. at the reunion and get her jumped. I, th- now, I thought it was Scotty stylist. Well, either way, it was a stylist from the, yes, the baddies. Because yes. Scotty was he like, does, don't get me involved in this. Was it? Because I could have sworn they said it was Natalie stylist as well. Mm-hmm. I think he styles all the girls. No? Whatever. It, whatever. Well, I don't know. The stylist for Zeus not work. Yes, yes, yes. Um, By the name of Darian Christopher. We're dropping names. Very We're dropping goodness. names. We're dropping names. Because girl... Girl, and just know we always got our receipts. So, yes, he said that, you know, he told E.T. that. So E.T. told Roly, that's who told her. So Roly went to him and was like, did you tell E.T. that Natalie was going to set her up? And he said, no, I don't even talk to E.T. I don't do none of that. Da, 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 da. Right? Uh, so... This is something that we saw online because, you know, when you go on Instagram, you see a bunch of stuff. So one of the blogs by the name of Clock the T, let me just make sure I'm getting that right. (coughs) All right. Yes. Clock the T posted a story from Darian's Christopher, Darian Christopher's Instagram. And he tagged Scarface and said, Scarface is a lying ass dust ball, and I don't know why the F she brought me into this ish. I'm not a cast member, and ever, I, and I never tried to be. So why am I in it? Question mark. You tried to come and do your big one at the reunion. You ran up on Natalie, and you used me as your scapegoat. When it was time to talk, and the cameras were there, you didn't have ish to say. Take your dusty ass back to Now That's TV. Okay. Then he also posted a screenshot of the text messages. The only time, this is his claim, the only time he's texted Scarface. And this was October 22nd at 11.22 a.m. on a Sunday. He said, hey, Scarface, this is Darian. I can't wait to see you on Baddies today, love. The fans are about to go crazy. I DM'd you on Instagram a while ago because I would love to style you and get you a custom dress for the reunion. Let me know what you think. Then he shared that screenshot. In the midst of sharing that, he captioned it and he said, this is the only time I've ever texted Scarface. Scared face is what he called her. Wow. This is the only time I've ever texted scared face, bitch, because you don't know how to dress. Everything that she wears is cheap and ugly. I was trying to put her onto the fashion game so she doesn't have to keep borrowing wigs from Natalie and clothes from Mariah Lynn, which is what Mariah had said in the reunion, by the way. So then he continues and says, other than that, I don't talk to this girl. I don't even follow her on Instagram. And the bitch can't post any receipts because she has none. I mean, <clears throat> one thing I got to say, though, and I'm going to approach this as unbiased as possible. Mm. But one big flaw, and I can't stand this because mm-hmm. I actually got mm-hmm. got by a girl who did something similar to this. Just because you posted the text message doesn't mean that you. Why would you be dumb enough to text that to mm-hmm. her? If you're gonna set Natalie, if you're gonna set Et up, yeah. to look like a fool, yeah, and it, it could have been easily a bribe by Lemmy, you know. That at the too. end of the day, why would you put yourself uh, put a receipt out there? Why would you text that to her? If you're gonna say something like that to her, you're gonna tell it to her verbally. Word of mouth. Just because yes. you show me the last text message, don't mean yeah. that that's the truth. Mm-hmm. Point blank. Point blank, period. Like, what, what? So let me just talk about how I feel about those posts. Yeah. I think it's interesting how someone can go from hitting you up, wanting to style you, to dogging you on the internet to save their ass. And hmm. I just feel like the way he's coming so hard for her, I'm like, okay, bro, I get it. This is your money. You don't want anyone to fuck up your money. And like you said, let me could have bribed him. We don't know. We don't know the case, right? We don't know the scenario. But just the way he's coming at her with the cheap clothes, calling her this, calling her that, dusty, scared face. 
I don't think I think that was so uncalled for. I feel like there's no need for the hostility and the aggression. I guess because he feels some type of way that yeah. you brought him in, right? Yeah, yeah. And I feel, but he went extra. I feel like, damn, like you could have, you didn't have to go that hard. Like she already got beat up. She already got jumped. Like you know what it I mean? It just feels like you're jumping on someone while they're down. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I was just like, damn. All right, like. But then again, I get it. You wouldn't want somebody to lie on you, right? Yeah, I agree. So yeah. maybe that's the energy. However. After seeing the blog, Clock the T, post his screenshots, they had also posted a picture with him and Scotty, and then they revealed his face. When I saw his face, I remembered who he was, because this is the same person that had previously commented on one of our YouTube videos, as well as one of our TikTok videos that had went had a little bit of virality. So I'm going to share that with you. Because as soon as I saw this, I was like, wait, that's the guy that, what? Mm -hmm. So yeah, just just stay with me, guys. This is some some interesting stuff here. So on October 3rd in 2023, y'all, on the TikTok, we had did a little snippet of one of our episodes. And we titled it, POV, Natalie Nunn Gives You a Fendi Bag. So when they were filming in New York, we were going to all of the events. And so we had gotten we had gotten a recording of Roly in the club just clutching that Roly bag for dear life. So we just were talking about it, bringing it back to that event that night. The security guard, the way she had this man holding, holding that Fendi the bag. bag for her, we have footage of her literally giving it to this guy. He's holding it as she's turning up, and we will show it here. Right. Shut up, she might Right behind her, just had it here, holding it the same way she was holding it. Like, just like, poor guy. That that was his job, to yeah. hold the Fendi to bag. To hold the Fendi bag. That was the whole point of that video. And so he saw the video and commented. And at the time, I didn't know who he was mm-hmm. until I checked out his page. And that's when I saw him with Scotty. And that's when, when seeing the blog post that picture with him and Scotty, that's when I was like, oh, I remember you. So he comments and he says, technically, I'm a talent assistant. But yes, that night, my job was to secure the bag. So I responded and I said, heard you. We didn't know that. Thanks for clarifying. And he just responded with the heart emoji, but with the hands. So that was that. Then this is when I really. So at first I looked at his Instagram. That's when I noticed who he was. I was like, okay, he has some connection to Zeus. But he also had commented on one of our YouTube videos. And that YouTube video is when we were in New York City. Right? Yeah, it was our Baddies East New York recap yes. video. Right. Because mm-hmm. when we went there, we went to the event. So we had our own shit to talk about. Yeah, we had our own analysis and right. everything like that. So he had commented under it and he said, I just want to clear something up. Please keep in mind that while they do club appearances on tour, they are also filming. Um, they are also filming a TV show. They get to club bookings late, not intentionally, but because they are filming a TV show. And also all 17 plus cast members had to get glam for the club in between time. There was no formula behind this, just how production works. And Jesse responded and said, thank you for clarifying. So we have our own assumptions because at the end of the day, we don't know shit. These are all assumptions. That is just context of who that person is. After seeing the blog post him, That's when I realized, oh, this guy has commented on our stuff before. Clearly, he's seen our stuff. Clearly, he also went out of his way to watch the YouTube video to comment as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And in that video, we do you do talk about oh the formula, how they show up late, da da da. -da." Yeah, yeah. Right. And then he wanted to clarify that. Don't know why, but he chose to. He felt like he needed to. Which, which at the end of the day, here's here's my thing, right? Mm -hmm. So I appreciate his comment because at the end of the day, you know, it's an insight. What what our recap is is insight for people who were physically at. the right, event, right. but don't know anything about right. production that's going on right now, the way they're filming. That was just how we interpreted it. Mm-hmm. He came in from the inside to clarify that type of information, right. which we appreciate because at the end of the day, it's nice to get someone to comment and, and clarify when we're wrong, right? Or to put more context into it. However, what I take away from it also is that it's not far-fetched that he 
just says things and involves himself. In, like, this was before the show even aired. Mm-hmm. This was in October. Yep. You know what I'm saying? This is before anything. They were still filming. So, right. you know, again, he's made appearances. He got involved in the in the, in the the tea right. on the internet. Right. That doesn't mean anything, however. It really doesn't. I'm just saying we've seen this guy before, so I thought it was interesting that out of all the people, people to tell E.T., it just happened to be you. Who was in our comments. So I just thought it's a it's an interesting it coincidence. It was very crazy coincidence. It's I was like, why is this coming back full circle to it, this it, guy? What it, the fuck? It is very interesting. Right. But my, my thing is this, right? How I feel about it. Did E.T. get set up by Natalie or was this a lie? Because the opposing team says... Of course, E.T. is lying mm-hmm. because she just wanted a reason to not look stupid mm-hmm. while running up on Natalie. Because right. she knew at the end of the day that she was not returning back to Baddies okay. or to Zeus, period. Right. Right. So that she was just going to go out with a bang. Right. Cool. That is an interesting and valid argument. However, for the opposing argument, right, mm-hmm. it is not far-fetched that Natalie can set up ET or that Lemmy had something to do with this. Mm-hmm. And this is where I feel like because they heard time and time again where uh-huh. production set shit up. Right. Now people say, why would production and Zeus set up Natalie? Why not? She is set up a- ET. Because you said set up Natalie. Right, but set up Natalie in a sense where like they told the oh. guy to say that, to whisper that into ET's ear. Wow. But they set mm-hmm. up Natalie because it's good for ratings. Because guess who gets more at the end of the day? Yes. Natalie and Lemmy are business partners. But the one difference is that Lemmy is behind the scenes Mm -hmm. and Natalie is in front. What other person do you know that didn't show up that would have confronted someone like Natalie? Krishan Rock. You don't have a Krishan Rock there. How else are you going to get somebody to do something good for ratings? And that's not to say this is just conspiracy. This is not true. It has not been confirmed. But I think it's not far-fetched because at the end of the day, he be throwing rocks and hiding his ham. He is that type of guy. Lemmy is messy. But that's I don't what I'm even saying. know. And and you know what I'm saying. So it's no coincidence. Uh, it, well, it is a coincidence. It's coincidence that all this is is a big possibility. But at the end of the day, what do you think? Do you think that Le- like production and Lemmy had something to do with that? You know, but whispering into ET's ear, knowing how the fans fell, knowing how everything was rum- was going mm-hmm. down online. Mm-hmm. Or is E.T. lying and that she just needed an excuse mm-hmm. to <laughs> to fight Natalie? I feel what do you like, think? I feel, I don't know why, don't ask me this, bitch. In my gut, and my gut is pretty strong, I do not think E.T. is lying. And yes, she has lied about stuff with Biggie, Right? That was a straight up lie, girl. That, like, we knew that that was a lie. But I feel like the way she ran up on Biggie versus the way she ran up on Natalie, two different energies. And I don't know why I do feel like someone, it was someone, whether it was the stylist or whether it was production, put something in E.T.'s ear because one, E.T. is easily manipulated. And two, it's easy to hate her. Yeah. The fans already didn't fuck with her. Already talking shit about her. Mm-hmm. Easy target to why would throw they, under the bus. Why, yeah. But I also feel like E.T., and, and this is why I feel like it's too easy to just blame E.T. Mm-hmm. It's a little too, you know, mm-hmm. uh, convenient yes. to just blame E.T. Yes. I do not know if the stylist is lying, but I know somebody lying, and yes. I don't think it's E.T. that's lying. Yes, you can say, oh, yeah, I'm going to go out with a bang regardless, but my thing is, you can say also, too, that, like, she was going to get jumped regardless. Mm-hmm. Like, she knew, whether it was up to Natalie or not, she knew she was getting jumped. The girls went online and said they was going to jump her. Yeah. So, like, be for real. You know what I mean? Yeah. Either way, she was going Either out with a bang. Either way, <laughs> she was going out with a bang. So, I just feel like that <laughs> argument just is not substantial strong? like yeah it's, it's not it's, it's not strong it's not anything to me because either way she was going out with a bang i did have um while it was happening i, I was like really uh, you know i'm sorry i just have one more thing to say sure and you know like you said you know there's nothing wrong with the stylist clearing up information clarifying because that's essentially what he did on tiktok and what he did under the comments on YouTube. But I just think it's interesting that, you know, baddies content would pop up on your FYP, but you do work for them. 
So that's not far fetched. It's the YouTube part where I'm a little skeptical because it's like you went out of your way to go watch the YouTube video. Maybe you were interested or I have no idea. Yeah, because I mean, DJ Sky said she she listened to our podcast, too, because but it was, there was it a was, post about her. What? The post about her is what made her listen to our YouTube video. There was nothing really about him. Right, but what if we came up? Like, and the video was pretty, it had caught a tra- uh, attention. It wasn't like a small video, you know what I'm saying? But I, I feel like maybe we captured, remember, these people are on from the inside. Mm-hmm. So I guess the way we captured the experience of a fan, let's just say fan be- for the lack of better terms, Right. Maybe he went out his way the same way Maybe. DJ Sky did yeah, but to the, the, listen to yeah, our perspective. Yeah, I guess it, like it's like I'm saying, I'm just chatting because none of this stuff is far fetched. Like if you want to watch a YouTube video, feel free. Right. You know, if you want to if we pop up on your TikTok, OK, that's fine. Stuff pops up on a lot of people's FYPs that don't even subscribe to Zeus. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like I get that. But I don't know, like a part of me just wonders it just makes me wonder, like you say you're you're not involved in TV drama, but what does that mean? Yeah, why say that? Yeah, like what does that mean? I feel like when to elaborate more on that, right? People who, you know, say, oh, I'm I'm a good person. I'm a good person. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they scream that the loudest. Meanwhile, yeah. they're not a good person. It's the same kind of like what you're saying. Like, you know, why would you choose to say that? You know, which I mean. I guess. And he could be right. You know, at the I end mean, of the day. I could understand why he would say that because it is TV drama at the end of the day. But do you really think that some part of him does not like the drama? I don't know. I mean, if he's working with them, like not we always, talk, not always. I get that. But we did talk about like, you know, you know, you're right. Not always. I just look I at know. look at look at Eli. Eli. I know this is why I'm saying not yeah. always. I get that, but and and Xavier. Yeah, and I get that, but Good he's people. not talking. They're not. Those people don't talk. Those people aren't in our comment section talking. Yeah, they didn't get dragged into. Those people are Eli not watching. Eli told me that you were exactly. It was again. It's exactly. a coincidence. It's just a coincidence that. You know, this guy happened to be the one to get dragged into it. Right. Take that as you will. Right. You know, whatever. Whatever. I don't know, man. Because even when Roly was talking about E.T., um, talking about, I told you not to listen to that boy. What does that mean? Right. I didn't get that. Like, is he messy already? Right. Do you know that he has messy tendencies? Right. Because when she said, I told you not to listen to that boy, what does that mean? It just, it's all sus. Yeah. Somebody's lying and I mm-hmm. don't think it's E.T. Yeah. Well, what I was going to say before was that I think when, when we were watching it, I thought it was really easy and it made me, it was so easy that it was almost uncomfortable to immediately just hop on the bandwagon like, yup, E.T.'s lying. Yeah. Because like, again, I'm a very fair person, mm-hmm. whether I like you or not, like it, we call it for what it is. And it just felt a little too, like you said, convenient. Too convenient. It's yeah, I don't know. And it's not far fetched because one, it's believable that Natalie would set you up, and it's not far fetched that production tells you that because how many times has production set these bitches up before? And what, what would make now different? Oh, right. because it's Natalie. How many times have they set up <laughs> Natalie before? Before. <laughs> It's not, it's not like, it's, it's not far-fetched. People make it sound like, oh, why would they betray Natalie? Be, why not? It's good for ratings. She's, why a, not? she's a talent at the end of the day. And Lemmy's not going to want to be known. So he's going to be like, yo, you know, Lemmy is really good at selling you something, like to sell you something because he's soft-spoken. He has money. He doesn't look intimidating. Yeah. So for me, it's like, he, it's easy to say, yo, we're going to say this. And it's easy because no one likes E.T. anyway. So we're just going to use her. She's too dumb to communicate yeah. what is going on, which is why she didn't come out. This is all speculation, by the way. But I feel like because she lacks the ability to communicate. So when Roly went outside to confront her and E.T. didn't come out, I don't think that means she was guilty or lying. I just think that she just has a terrible way of communicating. But Shorty just got beat up four and different the, times. Exactly. She's tired. She don't trust. She's done. And she, and I'm not coming out for nobody. Yeah. I don't know who's ha- who has my back and yeah, who doesn't. Exactly. And I just attacked the fucking executive producer. Yeah. Like, I'm not coming outside. Yeah, yeah. She unfollowed Rolly. <laughs> but this is all all speculatory. Nothing is confirmed. 
But we just want to bring perspective and food for thought because I feel like the internet is jumping on the ET's a liar <laughs> bandwagon, and I feel like it's e. also a liar. ET's a liar. She doesn't see us. She not thinking anymore. Oh, sorry, I had to. I had to. But yeah, uh, and I think it's important to hear and to 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 open your mind to more possibilities because these production companies, these reality TV shows are ruthless. There's no loyalty to nobody. No. Just remember that. Mm-hmm. Honestly, this is a hot take, but, and you know, I can't go based off of my gut all the time because I don't got all the facts because everything is <laughs> sus and there's no facts, <laughs> but I really do think that Darian is lying. I'm sorry. Oof. I think he's lying. I think he's lying to save his ass, maybe. Or, I don't know. Or, or, or. He was paid to say it. Or he and was he's paid lying. to say it. Yes, and It he's could lying. be other intentions. I agree. I feel like either he's lying, I don't know what the reason is, or I do feel like what you said, maybe Lemmy paid him off or paid him extra, or maybe production paid him to throw the bug in the ear. Right. But also, I feel like what you said with Roly, don't listen to that boy, just makes me think, like, mm. are you messy? Yeah. And also, it's like, maybe it could have even been as simple as, you know, Oh, he heard House B talking about Natalie set her up. Yeah. So he's like, yo, maybe sis. Like, like I'm warning you. I'm warning you. Right. And then it backfires. It backfires. And then right, he's right. going to save his ass and, and throw you under the bus. And that's what I think it is. I personally think that he really was trying to warn her. And now it just backfired and it's so bad. And now it's like he's trying to save his ass type shit. Hey, man, I don't know. But I anything, think he lying. And <laughs> Do y'all think he's lying? I like, think he's lying. Oh, my God, girl. Listen, don't. My gut telling me he's lying, bro. Your gut Don't is touch full. my gut. Don't touch my gut, Whoa. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. I just think it's interesting also that Roly just made it clear that she had nothing to do with it. She was, you know, on stage telling Natalie, like, you're my friend, all this stuff. I'm like, leave it to Roly to save her ass. Cause she yeah. not trying to, she not trying to, you know. Mess up her bag type shit. Yeah, she was really pushing for it. She was. She didn't really care about ET. She didn't and her really intentions. care about ET. She was just mostly talking about where she was coming from and was like, "How oh, she mad? I don't care." Da 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 da. But yeah. I would never. I'm like, well, <laughs> she's just trying to make sure she coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. That's really what it is. Pretty much. I was like, these bitches is not your friends in real life. E.T. really came in thinking that bitches was her friends. But can we just talk about how, like, Suki and Sapphire walked in? Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, because this part was, like, so stupid. And then Smiley walked Honestly, in. Honestly, I was really, like, bored. Yeah, with that part, right? With Mariah, Suki, yeah. and Sapphire. Let's talk about it. Girl. I was bored. It. Because it, it's not even the fact. It was just the, the fight itself, like, the argument. Mm-hmm. We know who was behind it. Right. It was Roly. Right. You know who said it to her. Because even Roly, because she's doubling down on the fact exactly. that Mariah, you did say that. Mm-hmm. Roly has a tendency of taking the truth and completely butchering it to make it sound something worse than it was. Yes. And that's what it sounds like. Yes. Like, like you know, talking about sneaking, sneaking this and sneaking mm-hmm. that. I mean, is it possible? Mariah is flip floppy, so maybe. But I feel like. Yeah, I feel like it was dragged. And I dragged. do feel like Roly planted that seed in Suki's ear. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that, like, you know, when Mariah was like, yeah, I feel like she's coming for me. Like, you know, it's just getting to a point where I don't know, like, you know, if she doesn't stop, we're going to fight. I do believe that. Yeah. I do believe that that was yes. said because, you know, Suki saying, I feel like you should go home. Then this whole other situation happening when and they were in Jamaica, Natalie and Scotty are having their, their whole fight. And then Mariah says something and then Suki saying, you don't got to. So she probably felt like Suki constantly was coming for her. And 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 to be honest. She kind of was after that. Right. Like, it, it wasn't necessary. Like, you didn't need to say anything you to didn't Mariah. Need, you didn't need to drag Mariah into the conversation, especially after you just helped her. Like, I thought that was funny. Right. Like, you know, it, I can see from Mariah's perspective how you look at Suki and be like, that's kind of funny, even though Suki may have some points. Right. But why are you saying, why didn't you just say that to her face? Right. If, the, if you went out your way to help her, Get her necklace. Right. You couldn't give her the decency to text her or let her know, like, mm-hmm. yo, you're acting corny personally. <laughs> like, you know, I think you should go home instead right. of tweeting it. Right. It's kind of weird, especially right. when you're not there the whole time. And then that's why Mariah said, you know, when you came in to help me get the chain back, I thought you had my back. Right. So I could understand Mariah why she felt away. Plus, she's sensitive. So I get that. 
But I just feel like Roly took that, ran with it, yeah. and switched up the story and made it seem like Mariah was going to sneak her and wanted to fight her, which I don't think was the case. Yeah, she may have said, oh, I feel some type of way. This is weird. Why do I feel like if she keeps checking me, we're going to fight? Okay, fair. But I don't think it was no extra shit. And I just feel like Roly just does that where she in- instigates a lot. Yeah. Seen her fucking do it. We see it time and time again. Right. Th- three seasons. And of it. every time when Mariah tries to clear the air, her big she ass gets- is getting loud. Yes. And I, I can't feel stand like that. every time she gets loud, it is just so telling. The same way she get she got loud talking about I hate when people lie, bitch, you were lying. Yeah, and then I love how she told Natalie, uh, by the way, like, oh, I swear on my son, I ain't had nothing to do with it. Bitch, you also swore on your son that you didn't bite Biggie, and you did. Exactly. Stop playing. You exactly. don't care about swearing on your son. Like, that's supposed right. to validate anything. Right. <laughs> right. And this is why I just, I just, I don't really care. I just take it with a grain of salt. I don't even know why Suki would even listen to anything Roly said, especially after her Roly got into it right. and got into a physical altercation. That part. So I just feel like it was, this is just one of those things where maybe Suki should have just left Roly as an op and leave it at that. Yeah. You why know, I don't know why up it her? was right. Why? I don't know why that was a thing, but mm-hmm. whatever. I guess people let bygones be bygones the same way she let it with Smiley. And I'm pretty sure she's going to do it with Mariah. Like, you know what I mean? But I just feel like that part was so fucking annoying. And then Mariah over explaining herself. Yes, I, I was over tired. it. I was like, girl, shut up. What are we talking about? Yeah, I was over it. What are you going to do? Nothing. Like- I just feel like there was no need for the conversation again. Can we talk about when Smiley came out? She came out with a whole other hair color. A whole other wig. <laughs> a whole other wig. How you go from green to brown? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, she has demented, yo. I just, I don't Biggie know, Biggie smacked the green out of her wig. Yeah. <laughs> yo, I can't. I was like, girl, she came in with the hoodie on, busted up hand. I just, I can't. And then they didn't let Smiley talk at all. I mean, she seemed like she didn't care to talk. And yeah, and then, yeah, it wraps up with Smiley and Mariah fighting because Smiley claims she wants her team back. And yeah, we're going to see what's in store for the next reunion. I do have a question. Mm -hmm. Would you say the reunion would have been as good without the Gremlin twins? Rolly and E.T., just in case. No, no. So do you think they're a necessary part of the equation? Yep, yeah. because to seek and E.T., that was a long overdue fight. Come on now. Yo. Be for real. Yeah. Yeah. Duh. So you think, okay, so you and think And they, they started it all of the bullshit. Yeah. Like, be for real. <laughs> so then you think that uh, Zeus is going to keep them, or obviously not E.T., but Rolly, because they look at her as an essential bad Zeus guy? Zeus is going to keep Rolly. Y'all are so mad about that. And like... <laughs> At the end of the day, no, it's true. We don't fuck with her either, how she portrays herself on the show. But we even know that Roly's coming back. There's nothing y'all are going to do. There's nothing you can do about so it. So you don't think the petition made no, a difference? No, I don't think the fucking petition. <laughs> you know what's going to fucking make it? And the petition was definitely an eye opener. Mm. But I feel like y'all need to unsubscribe from Zeus. If y'all really want to make a difference, yeah. unsubscribe and make them lose fucking money. Then that would probably get Lemmy's fucking attention. Right. You guys are just signing petitions, but y'all still watching because it's one of those things where it's like, I can't look, but I'm looking anyway. You know, (laughs) it's one of those things. But Unsubscribe. Unsubscribe. Stop following Zeus. Cut it off completely. Don't give no money. Nothing. Would you would you unsubscribe if Rolly? No. Back? Yeah, me neither. The fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck, bitch. We being honest. No. What the fuck? We I talk about this shit that, though. Bitch. Like we talk about this. Why the fuck would we unsubscribe? Yeah. Like, get the fuck out of here. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. And like I know that there's like free sites and shit, but bitch is never that deep. Yeah. yeah. Get the fuck out of here. No. <laughs> the fuck. No. <laughs> But y'all, if y'all really that mad, you should. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Definitely mad funny. Yeah. So, I mean, I can't wait to see what next the next part has in store. Um, Yeah, I know E.T. does come back out again and Sapphire and E.T. have their little one-on-one. Mariah and E.T. seem like they have their one-on-one. E.T. Yeah. just fighting everybody. And Anna and Anna Oh, too. and Anna, yes. Oh, my God. So, she's just fighting everybody. Yeah. Oh. Poor E.T. Oh my god. 
Yeah, well, I'm really curious <laughs> to know what you guys think. Do you feel bad for E.T.? I know a lot of you are going to... It's easy to say no, so... But I'm curious. Do you hear my side of things? Do you, you know, do you empathize a little bit with what I had to say? Do you think that Natalie, you know, had something to do with this? Or producers had anything to do with this? Or do you think, you know, Scarface is lying? I'm really yeah. curious to know what you guys have to think. Do you think the stylist is lying? Mm -hmm. Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to also tell me what the components of a good reality TV reunion is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's it, right? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. I'm excited to see the next part. And yeah, we're definitely going to be recapping it and sharing our thoughts. Back and here on Sunday night. Yeah. Y'all are fresh thoughts, <laughs> baby. We <laughs> love Literally, it. Literally, like we... We were drained. We watched that shit twice. Twice. So, yeah. so yeah, we really analyzed all of it. Like, <laughs> yep, yep. And then, oh, Sky jumping in. I'm sorry. And then trying to dap her up. Like, don't piss me off. Anywho, that was really like crazy because mm -hmm. you didn't do whatever. Anywho, so um, yeah. I mean, thank you guys for tuning in. So yes. where can they find you? You guys can find me on Instagram. That's J E S S I dot strange. And where can they find you, Tiana? You guys can find me on Instagram at randomania one. You guys can find us on Instagram at the petty headquarters. Follow us on Instagram guys. Mm -hmm. Follow us on Instagram. Okay. And you guys can also find us here on the podcast every Tuesday, 4 PM. We are on Apple, Spotify, Google, iHeartRadio, Amazon, Podbean, whatever you listen to your podcast on, we are there. Just type in the Petty Headquarters. We release episodes every Tuesday, 4 p.m. Keep that in mind. And if you want to watch visual episodes, it is on the YouTube channel, Petty Sim Productions. And if you want to check out my funny TikToks, it is Petty Sim Productions. So, yes, with that being said, this was your weekly dose of mess. <laughs>